Hi guys, it's Ty and welcome back to my channel. So today I am doing another which one is better and I've done this a couple of times on my channel already where I kind of read a couple of books that have the same topic and I do a brief synopsis on the books and then I tell you guys which one I thought was better. And so since this is the Halloween season, I decided to put pick some books that were in the horror thriller genre and I decided to go with some books that were all about the final girls and if you haven't guessed it by my thumbnail you already know which three books I decided to choose so we will go ahead and get started and how I'm going to do this is for each book I will just go ahead and give a brief synopsis on each one and then I will go ahead and tell you guys which out of the three I thought was better and then I will explain why and we'll just take it from there. This will be completely spoiler free so you guys don't have to worry about that so let's go ahead and get started. As far as the order of the books that I will be giving the synopsis in, I will just go ahead and go in the order that I read them in. And the first book that I started with was Final Girls by Riley Sager. And this is actually the very first Riley Sager book that I have ever read. And surprisingly enough, I actually have all of his books, but this is the first one that I read. And I actually think this is either the first or second book that he's written but I think this might be the first one. So Final Girls by Riley Sager is about our main character by the name of Quincy Carpenter and when she was a college student her and a few of her friends went off to this place called Pine Cottage and while they were there her friends were br brutally murdered and Quincy was the only one that made it out alive and we learned very early in the story that Quincy actually had some memory loss after the incident and she doesn't really quite remember everything that happened in that night and so over the years Quincy has tried to slowly piece her life back together she started a baking blog and she has been living with her boyfriend by the name of Jeff and she has just been trying to get through her life day to day we also learned that around the time her incident took place there were two other women that were going through their own tragic incidents one by the name of Lisa Milner and then another one by the name of Samantha Boyd and we kind of learned that each of those women had at some point tried to come together. Now Quincy and Lisa had been the only two that kind of kept in touch and they were only able to keep in touch through emails while Samantha was the one that kind of disappeared after her incident so that the media wouldn't be able to track her down. So we learn that Lisa has died and out of nowhere, Sam shows up at Quincy's door. And so throughout the story, Quincy's memory is slowly coming back to her and she is slowly trying to piece together what actually took place the night at Pine Cottage. And she is now starting to question why Sam all of a sudden shows up at her door and what Sam's connection is to her and possibly to Lisa. So that is what the basic premise of this story is. So then the next one that I picked up is The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. And this is actually my fourth book by Grady Hendrix. And this book actually came out sometime this summer. And so this one follows six women that are a part of this support group and so they have actually been going to the support group for about 16 years and all the women in the support group have had some sort of traumatic experience that has happened to them that have left them all to be final girls and so one day one of the women actually misses the support group and one of the women have been notified while they're at the group meeting that the one that missed the meeting has been brutally murdered and so we're following our main character by the name of Lynette Tarkington and she has taken it upon herself to be the one to actually find out who has found out about the group and who is going out trying to murder them one by one and the story takes off from there and that is the basic premise of this one. And the last one that I read is The Last Final Girl by Stephen Graham Jones and I recently read this one a couple of days ago and this is only the second book that I read from this author. The only other book that I read from him was The Night of the Mannequins which I really enjoyed. So this is about 
a girl by the name of Lindsay who was in high school and one night her and her friends have been attacked by someone that is in a Michael Jackson mask that goes by the name of Billie Jean and her group of friends have been brutally murdered and Lindsay is the only one that was able to survive and her group of friends that were murdered were actually a part of her homecoming court so she has to go and choose another group of friends to become her homecoming court but she decides to choose a group of misfits and so the person that goes by Billie Jean actually comes back and starts to attack this new homecoming court and the story kind of takes off from there with everyone trying to survive. So that is the basic premise of this one. So that is the synopsis of each of those books. So I will go ahead and tell you guys which one I liked out of those three. But instead of me just going ahead and just telling you guys which one outright that I liked, I guess I would just go from my least favorite to my favorite. And by the synopsis, <laughs> I'm just wondering if you guys can already tell which one was my favorite and which one was my least favorite. So we'll go ahead and start with my least favorite. And if you guys cannot tell, my least favorite was The Last Final Girl by Stephen Graham Jones. And the reason why I say you couldn't tell, I could barely get out a synopsis for this because I actually DNF'd one. I DNF this one. Um, this was so hard to get through. And it was hard for me to even give you guys a synopsis because I actually had to give you the synopsis off the back of the book because I only made it 65 pages into this book. And I actually wanted to DNF it before I even got to that point. And I was so sad about it because I was so looking forward to this one. Like I said before, I read one the one novella before from this author, which I really enjoyed, so I thought I was really going to like this one. I did not like this. For the love of God, I did not like this. So my biggest problem with this one is how it's written. It's like written like a um, movie script, I guess. I don't... And that's, I guess, not really a problem because I've kind of... I've read stuff like that before, but the way that it's broken up, it has like, it'll stop in the middle of a sentence and then there's like an arrow and it'll, it's just, it's written really weird and it just takes you out of the story. I don't even, I don't even know of me showing it, like how it's like broken up like that and like all of the page breaks it's so jarring and it just keeps taking you out and it's it just kept taking me out of the story some people might like it some people might be fine with it people who are used to reading this type of thing might be okay with it but I could not I just I could not I couldn't I'm surprised I got 65 pages in because like I said, I wanted to put this down about three pages in because I was like, oh, no. And had I, if I would have picked this up at like an actual bookstore where I could have looked at it before, before I would have bought it, I probably would not have bought it, but I ordered it offline. So that was the problem. Another thing that I didn't like um that was just annoying which usually does not annoy me was all of the like horror movie references and like the pop culture references because there were just so many and in the beginning I thought it was pretty cool I was just like oh my gosh there's so many references in here and it was cool and I was like oh, okay I'm like recognizing a lot of these references but after a while it was just like this is annoying like it, it was too many. Again, I only got 65 pages in and after 65 pages, like I just stopped keeping track because there were so many references. It was not needed. So if I would have kept going, I don't even know how much more you can reference in this book. This book is barely 200 pages. So I just don't understand. I didn't like it. I did not like this. 
I don't even know who I could recommend this to. And usually I'm someone, even if I don't like a book, I can still recommend it to somebody because there is somebody else who might like it. But I don't even know who I can re recommend this to. Because I just, I couldn't, I could not. I, I did not like this at all. Not even a little bit. So after that debacle, <laughs> we're down to the last two. And in between those two, the one that I thought was okay was Final Girls by Riley Sager. I ended up rating this one a three stars. I thought it was fine. I listened to it on audiobook. I thought the audiobook was fine. I thought the overall story was fine. I The one thing that I really liked about this story was in the beginning as part of the synopsis I told you that our main character Quincy didn't quite remember exactly what happened to her when she was at Pine Cottage so throughout the story she was getting her memory back and we had these little snippets of chapters where we were getting told what happened at Pine Cottage and I actually liked that I liked those little parts of the story where we were getting told the story of what happened at Pine Cottage. I really enjoyed that. The rest of the story, it was fine. The reveal at the end of what happened and what took place, the twist, <laughs> it was fine. <laughs> um, I don't really have like too many complaints. I do think um, some parts in the middle were a little slow. I think our character... Sam that just kind of like popped up at her door out of nowhere I mean that was a little suspect I, so I mean stuff like that you kind of knew something was going on something wasn't right so it was kind of predictable so when we got to the end and we got to the twist it wasn't really that shocking to me so, I mean, again, it was fine. Like I said, this was my first book by Riley Sager. I, this did not steer me away from wanting to read anything else from Riley Sager. So, I'm still wanting to read all the other books that I already bought from him. <laughs> so, it was fine. Perfect three stars. I enjoyed it for what it was. I enjoyed it while I was listening to it. I would recommend it. It was, it was a fine three star read. So obviously my favorite one and which is surprising because I have heard so many mixed things about this book. People either really liked it or they did not like it at all. And so I tried to not let other people's reviews taint me for when I went into the story because Grady Hendrix books have been all over the spectrum for me like I said this was the fourth one that I've read from him and I've either really enjoyed it or not enjoyed it or it fell in the middle for me so I just did not know where this was going to fall for me but the final girls support group I ended up giving this a four out of five stars I really enjoyed this one of the things that I actually enjoyed in this one that just did not work for me um, as far as the last final girl written by Stephen Graham Jones is all of the ref the horror movie references. So a lot of, not a lot, all of the final girls in this story. So all of their backstories are actually based off of horror movies out there today. So and I'm not going to say which ones because I don't want to spoil anything. Like I said, all this is going to be spoiler free. So all of their backstories are based off of horror movies that we all know and recognize from today. So I really appreciated that. And I like that. And this is, this reads just like a horror movie. So if you are somebody that don't like horror movies, you're probably not going to like this. If you don't like anything that has to do with like serial killers, or anything like that, you're probably not going to like that. Me, I love stuff like that. So this definitely, definitely worked for me. I also liked that our main character, Lynette, was an unreliable narrator. So we just did not 
for me this is definitely my opinion you just didn't really know what was going on you didn't know if you could trust her you didn't know if you can trust the other girls in the support group you didn't know um if you can trust you know the side characters like at a certain point you just didn't know what was going on at least i didn't so i really like that now as far as a couple of complaints that i did have there was one girl in here who that was a part of the support group who we didn't get any backstory about her at all it was kind of alluded to of what horror movie her backstory could be but we didn't get any information about her backstory at all and i wish we would have um because i really wanted to know and there was a, a certain point that i thought i might have missed it because i do take notes when i read and i was like man did i miss her story and i actually was like flipping through i had to google it because i was like did i really just miss what her story was and i wasn't alone we just didn't get it so i really wish we would have because i really wanted it but um another thing that i didn't really like was i do feel like this did feel a little long at certain points a little the pacing was a little off to me sometimes it did kind of drag just a little bit but those things didn't take away my enjoyment that much i just i love this another thing that i really did like too was that in at the beginning of each chapter um we did have some mixed media formats so it was told in like newspaper clippings um articles interviews emails letters so we had stuff like <clears throat> like this mm, can't really say that like this or oh maybe this one's better you know like that i really like it when books have like the mixed media format that's like my favorite thing i just love stuff like that so i enjoyed this again out of all three this one was definitely my favorite if you're one of those people that have seen all the reviews <laughs> the mixed reviews about this one and you're hesitant to pick it up i would say give it a try it might just work for you because i was definitely one of those people that was hesitant i didn't know if i was gonna read it i was actually gonna put it off because i kind of wanted to forget about everything that i had all the reviews i had watched all the reviews that i had read because i was like oh man i don't know if i'm gonna like this one but i i enjoyed it more than i thought i was going to so this one out of all three was definitely my favorite and the winner of the final girls showdown so that is all that i have for you guys today and i hope that i see you guys next time bye